Hello, Evan Rain here, and today we got a fridge that needs some troubleshooting here. Now, I've actually already done the troubleshooting, and I think I know what's wrong. We're going to be working on replacing the uh, part here a little bit later in this video. But first things first, I, would, I just wanted to walk you folks through like the uh, troubleshooting process here on this fridge. Now, this is a little bit older fridge here, so there's no circuit boards or any of that nonsense you got to worry about here on, on this one. Everyone. There's just a couple of sensors. Of course, you got your... Uh, pump and a couple of fans that uh, could potentially not be working. So not a whole lot that can really go wrong with this unit, I mean, at least not that's easily replaceable, unless of course you're talking uh, the pump. If, if that's bad, of one, then you pretty much might as well throw the fridge away at that point. But the fan sensors, those of them are relatively easily replaceable. So starting with this uh, fridge, I would, and I'm not going to pull it out, but if you were to go down behind the fridge here, uh, there is a fan, and then there is, a, I call it a pumper, that's actually a compressor. Uh, the compressor that is back there, uh, both of which are running here, and it's actually, the fridge is actually running here at this point as well. So if you're to check back there, everyone, the fan is running. Uh, you want to make sure the fan is clean and that the coils, so underneath here, there's all coils under here, make sure the coils are clean. If they're dirty, everyone, your fridge is going to have a hard time running, and that might be the problem. I know my parents had it one time, and their fridge was not working. It turned out it was just uh, dirty on the coils there and it was causing the uh, compressor to was it short cycle i think or something i forget exactly what was going on but just something to keep in mind make sure it's clean and of course down to the floor i mean, it's relatively easily to get dirty so compressor is running that's always a good sign if your compressor is not running that one that's probably not a good sign uh and again if the compressor is bad on these i would typically just throw them away at that point because recharging them and uh, fixing the compressor just yeah not worth it so fans running compressors running that's a good sign most older fridges too, if you take your front grill off or somewhere down along the bottom, they are going to have a defrost timer. So if you look down here, but hopefully you can see that. There's the red knob, that is the defrost timer. Now I'm not gonna adjust it here this time, but if your fridge is not running or the compressor is not running, you can try turning that timer and see once if the compressor will kick on. It's possible if the timer is in defrost mode, in defrost mode, it's going to shut the compressor off and it's actually going to turn the heater on on the coils inside your freezer or fridge, depending on how it's set up. Moving on to the inside of the freezer oven, we got a couple more things that could uh, potentially be wrong. Actually, let's start the fridge side. So up behind uh, the milk and the orange juice oven, there's a couple of your adjustment knobs for cooling. Potentially, you could have a problem with those, although I'm not sure how common that is, everyone. Down on this freezer side, though, uh, back behind this panel, we're going to pull this off here in a minute. Uh, we've got another fan that, of course, is on the, I think it's the evaporator coils, right? I always get my uh, coils confused, that one. So you got a set of coils underneath, and you got a set of coils inside, right? Pretty sure these are the evaporator coils. And there's, of course, a fan on those, that one. If that fan is not working, which happened to be my problem in this case, that one, um, the cold air is not going to be pulled or blown through the coils very well. Your coils are probably going to freeze up, which in my case, the coils were frozen up, everyone. Even with the defrost, it is, yeah, the coils were still frozen because the fan wasn't running and pulling the air through them. Now, was it because the fan was bad? No, turns out I don't think the fan was bad. Uh, there was a switch on there that went bad. So we're going to pull this out a minute and we'll show you what we got going on. Okay, so we're going to pull these screws out here a minute. And this is just a uh, quarter inch drive here, by the way. Uh, Amana fridge and freezer here for those who are wondering. Lift that up, pull this out. Okay, now that we got that uh, panel off of you can see the coils here that are inside of the fridge. And if you look up here a little bit, there's that uh, fan I was talking about. So when I initially pulled this panel off, I noticed right away that that fan was not running. Now that, by the way, is also controlled by the defrost timer, but the compressor was running, Evan, so if the compressor is running, that fan is supposed to be running, along with the other fan that is, again, back behind there. So you want to make sure both fans, so there's a fan on this set of coils, and there's a fan on this set of coils. And this, of course, is inside the freezer. Now, uh, one thing to note, I mean, if you have a... Uh, freezer that is mounted on top of the fridge, those might not necessarily have fans on because that's just going to rely on the gravity to just, you know, force the air down, right? In this case, I mean, we got a side, you know, fridge and freezer. We need to somehow circulate the air through here. So 
That's what the fan is for. And you may know something, there's a little bit of ice here on that coil. Not a lot. I think it just fr finished running the defrost cyclone because, well, if you look at that, that's not a good temperature here. Plus, I got the door open, so that doesn't help either. But it was down about 20, 30 degrees here before I opened the door and started working on this. And uh, what this, what's happening here, everyone, so when I noticed, when I pulled this off, the fan was not running. So I pulled the fan out of it. I thought the fan was bad. Turns out the fan's not bad. Uh, I just hooked this up to power, by the way. So I pulled the fan out. Uh, I wired up a plug and plugged it literally into the wall of one, and the fan ran. I'm like, oh, okay, so the fan seems to be working. So something must not be sending power here to the fan. Well, it took me a little bit more troubleshooting, and uh, I had to wait for this to defrost because this was all iced up here as well. But once it uh, defrosted, everyone, I found this, and hopefully folks can see this okay. This is a defrost termination switch. Uh, it is activated by temperature. And I'm not exactly sure what the temperatures are. I think it's like 30, actually, you know what? I think the temperatures are right there. I could be wrong on But it opens up, I think, at 48 degrees and closes at 33 degrees. I think that's what that means, Evan. So uh, if it's 33 degrees, Evan, this switch should be closed. And you may notice, Evan, yeah, it doesn't look, uh, doesn't look real healthy, does it? It looks a little exploded. So that's how I found this, Evan. I was looking through here and like, oh, wait a minute. And this was sitting back here, by the way. It's clamped onto the coils, that's what this is for. So I've got a new one of those, everyone. New uh, switch right here, we're gonna put this on and see if it works. Now what I did temporarily, everyone, is I took the switch out of the equation. So these wires right here are supposed to be connected. I just uh, connected them together for the time being. The only problem with this, everyone, is it doesn't have a way to shut off the defrost when it's finished other than the timer. So now the defrost runs too long and warms the freezer up a little too much. Okay, well, let's get to uh, fixing this. So I got a brand new defrost termination switch here. So again, once these coils warm up, everyone, this uh, defrost termination switch turns the heater off, which is down at the bottom here. And then once the uh, coils cool back down, so I, and I think that's supposed to be 33 degrees if I understand this correctly, Evan, then it will kick the switch back on. However, because the defrost timer should be off, it will then turn the fan on instead. So this controls both the fan and the coils. So we'll get this uh, wired back in. And again, I just got a connector in at the moment. We're gonna cut that uh, connector. And the power's on yet, so I should probably be a little bit careful about this. Yep, it's gonna shut off. And we'll take our connector here. Normally I would uh, twist those wires around, but again, we got the power on at the moment. I would probably uh, suggest, Evan, if you're working on your fridge, you probably shut the power off, probably a good idea, but since we like living our life on the edge here, we'll just leave it on. Should be a relatively easy fix here. So brown wire to brown wire. And at least with my particular fridge, Evan, they did offer a more expensive repair kit that came with all the wire connectors. So this switch was $10 by itself, but if you wanted the little bit of extra wire, and an emphasis on the little bit of extra wire, so it goes up into, I think it's that connector there, and goes up into this connector here with the uh, fan, it was like another $50. So been $60 plus, Evan, if you wanted like the entire kit so you could just like plug and play. So just FYI, that is an option. Obviously an option I decided not to go with. So I'm just using some heat shrink connectors here. And we'll just uh, heat these up and shrink them down. And you may notice, by the way, the fan is not turned back on yet, and that's because this switch is probably over 48 degrees, and therefore the switch is currently in the open position. 
As soon as we put this switch back on the coils, the coils should cool it down and the switch should kick on and turn the fan back on. Okay, there we go, one. We'll plug this back in here a minute. Actually, yeah, we'll plug this back in. There we go. And then we'll get this mounted back up on the coil here. That'll reach in here a little more. There we go, got it snapped on there. And we'll just tuck these wires up in this zip tie here. Okay, that should be good, I guess. And like I said, Evan, we wait a few minutes here. Once that uh, switch starts cooling down, which it should, because it the compressor should be running here at this point, it should turn back on and that fan will come on. Nope, there we go, Evan. And apparently that switch just got below, and again, I think it's 33 degrees here on that switch, Evan. And you notice that fan just turned on. So that should be all that is needed to fix this uh, fridge here. Hope, Evan. We'll have to keep an eye on it here, see if it uh, continues to work. I'll probably make sure here before I put any uh, food actually in here. Uh, and again, one of the problems here, with what I did, everyone, again, it worked, but it would not turn the defrost off on here once it was warm enough. So what this switch is supposed to do, for those of you wondering, once the defrost is finished warming these coils up and hopefully melting anything off here, and again, apparently that magical temperature is 48 degrees, I wonder how, at least if I understand it correctly, so once this coil reaches 48 degrees, and of course, for those you know, heat rises, so the last spot that should get probably hot would be up there, I would assume. So as the coil slowly warms up, everyone, at some point this should hit 48 degrees on the coil, hopefully not in your fridge itself, of course, right? Uh, on the 48 degrees on the coil, and it will shut this heater off. And then, of course, once the heater's done, and then the uh, defrost timer that's underneath there times out, everyone, the uh, compressor will kick back on, which will cool these coils back down. Once they cool down, everyone, that switch will turn back on. But at that point, this switch down here is off, everyone, so the heaters won't turn on, but the fan will turn on. So at this point, we should be fixed. Okay, we just need to finish putting the panel back on here a minute. Watch you don't get any fingers in the fan there. Okay, looks like there's one in there and one there. Unfortunately, I've only got one screw left, so I think we're gonna put it here. Yeah, that should be pretty good, everyone. 
Okay, well, I think that's going to do it here for this uh, video. We'll have to see once up the uh, fridge gets down to a temperature and continues to work properly. Hopefully, everyone, that was the only problem. Unfortunately, you never know. Uh, this was just a, a $10 fix, and uh, we'll have to see once if that actually is the only fix. Uh, you never know when there could have been something that caused that uh, original switch to explode. In this case, I'm thinking not of it, but I don't know for sure. So, again, we'll let it run here and see once what it does. Of course, got to mention to Evan, if you're going to be uh, troubleshooting a fridge like this, something that is indispensable for troubleshooting is an electrical tester of some sorts. Uh, at least if you can do voltage, you know, at the bare minimum. This one's handy because you can also do amperage, and I can clamp around the uh, compressor wire there and see if the compressor is actually drawing what it is supposed to be. And at least on this fridge, it is that one. So, again, I can clamp around the power wire, see what the fridge is supposed to be drawn, and verify that it is within the range it needs to be. Uh, again, I want to emphasize that one uh, with a fridge like this or freezer. If the compressor is not working right or it's bad, usually at that point I want it's not worth fixing it so but uh, for fans uh, you know cleanliness of the coils uh, switches that type of thing everyone those are usually fairly cheap and easily replaceable and are probably worth uh, doing on something like this so with that you folks have any comments or questions be sure to leave them down below and as always everyone thanks for watching and until next time